You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, it's time for the Project X. This sounds kind of mysterious. This device is kind of a knockoff when it comes to the PlayStation Portable. As making this video at this moment or this unboxing, the original product from Sony didn't even launch in my country. I'm still waiting for it, but the Chinese already made a tiny version of it. And I must say, first of all, I must give them extra kudos from the box. They did put some effort in, in it. But the question remains, what are we going to have with the device itself? Because yeah so this thing is just a machine that can play all kinds of retro games is the software good or is it just absolutely one huge disaster so first of all when it comes to the form factor it is a very thin model but it is not like completely flat if you look in closely you can just see there are some curves here and there and i can tell you this thing feels kind of comfortable not the best out there but it's not the most worst let's say device out there that i've ever held in my hand <laughs> but before we're going to check it out the software itself we're doing quick unboxing what we are going to see inside of here because we do have the type c connection nowadays so that's kind of cool it comes even including an hdmi this is a normal hdmi to a mini hdmi because it even had tv out functionality and a quick toilet paper manual the glossy paper deluxe version with a quick overview of some explanation of the device itself how you need to reset it and what kind of stuff it can actually play i can tell you it does have the option to emulate playstation one so that's kind of cool and later on we're also going to do a check up of the hdmi functionality where they absolutely nailed it with the theme i must say that when it comes to the software mm, spoiler alert it's not going to be the most amazing thing out there the overall layout it's yeah it's the same stuff that we have seen many times before with two freaking analog joysticks even including a click what is interesting that both of them will have different kind of rubber or patterns and then it's also kind of interesting that we have two different joysticks the a b and y button do feel quite nice but the d-pad is actually not really d-pad but just four separate buttons but if you just need to move around and this is a very nice pleasant experience but this is my opinion not the best when it comes to fighting games but if you just want to play a game like contra it's not going to be the perfect experience in my opinion so first of all is that yep navigating through the game it is possible in my opinion but you really need to get used to the overall d-pad layout i really hate these freaking four separate buttons at the right side we're going to get ourselves the a b x y button and they do have a very short very nice travel when it comes to the form factor of the buttons they are very pleasant and they are very comfortable why i personally hate these small buttons this is not bad at all but on top we do have the option to add ourselves an sd card the hdmi out we're having a micro <laughs> a micro usb then we're having an type c connection volume control with a physical button and the on off switch that you need to hold a couple of seconds for booting up the device so when it comes to the back it's all glossy and oh yeah it's a fingerprint nightmare and on the bottom we're not going to get anything there is no jack out when it comes to the headphone jack so yeah that's a little bit of a bummer because i know a lot of people love to have that option I already noticed with this unboxing that there are quite some, let's say, overall like quality issues where the front glass is just completely loose over there. One thing I did notice that the front glass they're using is a very thin material. So if you're going to be bashing into it, oh boy, you're going to absolutely destroy the LCD panel. It is a little bit difficult to capture, but there is some, let's say, distance between the front glass and the actual LCD. So that's a good point. Let's put it that way. But finally we do have a stereo configuration at the back. I've been like saying complaining about it ever since with the budget devices and they finally implemented one of them. But I was quite disappointed with the let's say loudness of the two speakers. Another problem is if you're just going to be holding your hand you're going to be covering up sometimes the speaker so that it even lowers the volume a little bit more. But when it comes to the overall quality I'm quite surprised by it even if it's not that loud. But when you're going to be booting it up, it's going to be even more funnier. So first of all, we're going to get a very cool light up feature. And it says when booting up Project X. 
But let's take a close look at the specification list. The display is in 4.3 inches with a resolution of 800 by 480. The CPU is an ATM 7501 quad core that has a RAM of 2 GB DDR3. Internal memory is 8 GB, but you can expand it to a maximum of 128 GB. Battery life is 2500 milliamp and will give you around 5 hours of gaming time. So we do have like a wide range of different support, but one of the cool features they implement nowadays is finally stereo speakers. But also when you're looking at a certain angle, it's always like the Project 8 bezel, but it's very thin and very looking nice, especially when it comes to the corners. Yeah, it will cover up a part of your screen, so the placement of the LCD display is not perfect. But what can we actually do with this freaking thing? Let's talk about that. Because this thing is more like a multimedia device, think about your PlayStation Portable. So what I do find very pleasant that we're having over here the Game Boy Advance, Super Famicom, Famicom, the arcade stuff, Mega Drive, Game Boy Classic, PlayStation 1 and just the games. So what you need to navigate, you can just use the D-pad or use the analog stick. Pressing B will get you into the list and this is actually the same Explorer stuff that we have seen before. Uh, there's only an internal memory, that's it. It just shows cases if you want to get into an SD card and pressing A it will bring you back. Over here we do have the video option. Oh man, this is really sensitive. Then the music. And we can listen to some music in the end. Okay. So we also have the option to watch a video. So it was kind of scary to open it up. Let's choose a 1.3 MP4. And you can just basically look at the movies. Next up, let's take a close look at the pretty pictures. There is nothing much to see over here. And that's actually it. So this thing does have a couple of features, including ebook, calculator, stopwatch, then we can change out the theme at the back. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because there are like huge thumbnails. Settings, here we can go to the display settings, the backlight brightness. And yep, I can tell you that this thing goes quite bright when it comes to the display. Backlight can also be as a shutdown after one minute. You can also basically configure this. Auto off can be checked out. File sorting mode, that is kind of interesting. That is the first time I have ever seen it. Order number or order time language and you have a lot of them nowadays so that's kind of interesting even if my even my native language is in there information so this is version 055 version 2 and i'm guessing it's particularly the software itself maybe the keychain can be changed out and we can just turn it off format the internal memory never do that otherwise everything will be wiped and you will have a problem in the end so that's it. That's the only thing that we can go into the settings. And of course the browser and the browser function. Oh man, that's so laughable. This is actually just checking out internal files. It's actually the same thing that we had with all the other, I think it was the other piece that were, yeah, the other piece, the games, the games thumbnail, that was the one. It's actually the same thing where we can just check out what's inside. We do have different pages. So first of all, having the main page, then we're going to make the same overall like say shenanigans when it comes to these tiny thumbnails because you can change them out you cannot do anything about them if your file gets corrupted or is a problem there is nothing you can do so that's actually what we're going to get with this particular piece of hardware yeah another feature we need to discuss is the search function we have the option to search now that was a feature we didn't have before so it's very convenient especially if you have a huge list of games okay i have a brave or what Oh, we need to press the button really hard and really slow. Then it actually works. Okay, search and there is no file. Yeah. Then of course we can make a quick load and quick save. So I'll give you an example. So here we're having the option to make a progress save. Unfortunately, it's not a really a way to find out what or where you were. Some of the devices do have this. So let's say I'm going to be lo looking into a way to basically cheat the system if you don't have an internal save you can just do it like this load the process here it says archived and that's it it will load up to the point and it works absolutely great pressing both the select and start will give you the special menu with the special menu there we can actually mess around with it if you want to and i completely mess it up because i accidentally pressed the freaking wrong button because they like reverted their a and b man it gets me some malfunction in my brain Check out the settings, here we have sound output, they can be turned on and off, key mapping, screen size, we have the option now for scale, 
and for full screen let's show you the scale option and actually we're having a great expert ratio option there so when it comes to the software it's the same kind of stuff that we've seen many times before now so if you're having an SD card, we have a maximum 128 gigabyte you're going to use. You need to format it on FAT32 or FATX, if I'm saying it correctly. You're going to be plugging it in, and when plugging in, you will have the notification card is going to be in. Oh, there we go. And automatically, it will be added to the system. So the next thing that we need to do, I already mentioned before, in the menu here, we can choose to go all the way to the card settings. And in here, we're going to get an extra option, such as entering a cheat code. Card directory. I've made different folders in the SD card and at this point we can just actually play our games that we've added. For example, if you want to have some Mega Drive games, you can just play them through here. This is actually how easy it is to add new games to the system. But let's start off with some Alligator Hunt. But when listening to the music... Do have the idea that... Let's move into a different game and oh man, the frames per second are really horrible in this particular game. You can just see how stuttering it is. And that is also a little bit of a bummer when you're getting a brand new product like this and it just actually runs pretty damn bad. Especially with basic games like MAME. But next up, let's take a close look at some NES and where the emulation is quite nice. I do have a feeling there is a little bit of now an input delay going on there, but it's, it's a little bit of a bummer that the volume is, has been set to maximum, but the audio from coming out of the speaker is completely different when it comes to that. Say the main game we just played. So in my opinion, also there they did some messing up. Yeah, and also specs ratio, the same shenanigans that we talked about before. It will be implemented of every single game. So with the full screen now to set here. We don't have the full screen going on. So that's actually how it works when it comes to software. And if you've seen in a couple of my videos, there's the same kind of software that we've seen before with different X-Series devices. At least let's move on to the Gradius Advance on the Game Boy Advance. And first of all, when I'm listening to the soundtracks, I can tell you that it does sound not bad at all. I don't hear any weird thing going on. So the overall performance seems to be working fine. can play with the analog stick and with the d-pad if you want to but I find also interesting that we can actually use the right joystick for just shooting because they mapped it to the A, B, X, Y button so there's a different way to play I do wonder if people actually play like this also here we have no problems whatsoever No problems with it, and also no screen tearing so far I can see. It's kind of interesting that some of the emulators are completely messed up, and some have just overall great performance. Of course I wanted to play a short part of the Metal Slug games. But the emulation from the MAME is pretty damn awful, but we do have great emulation performance when it comes to Neo Geo. But let's get into some Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. All right, the sound effect seems to be working just fine. Because this is a general problem with these cheaper emulation devices. That is something they always seem to be messing up. Next up, let's take a close look into the bonus stage. Because there's another area where it sometimes completely drops the ball. Man, I can tell you this freaking joystick. Is so annoying because it has like a freaking overall input lag. Okay, so let's place our bid in the game. This is such a fun experience that you needed to bid against the other players or the CPUs in this case. And then you can actually like get into the race. And if you're going to be first place, you're going to win all the money where you can upgrade your car. Of course, not going to bet. Oh, this guy's betting at 1200. Okay, I am done with this. I'm not going to bet betting anything because I am just a cheapskate. 
But you can just hear where the audio also there it goes absolutely in a very bad emulation with frame drops. But getting into the game, we do have an okay, pleasant experience. The unfortunate part is when it comes to the SPS ratio, that doesn't work with PlayStation 1. It's completely like messed up. So the next thing that we need to do first is getting the SPS ratio all the way up to the full screen. Otherwise the game is completely unplayable. Although, to the point when it comes to the SPS ratio. So putting it up, at first I was quite surprised that this seems to be running just fine. And the reason I'm surprised because the chipset they're using inside this device has a lot of problems when it comes to PlayStation 1. But getting actually into the game, there we're noticing the most big problems. Stuttering and slowdowns to the maximum level. And it's a little bit of a bummer because PlayStation 1 on this Project X is an absolutely cool addition. Yeah, nevertheless there are a lot of different devices nowadays from Pau Kitty and Enbernic that can play PlayStation 1 without any problem. Of course, for the money we're paying for in Project X from China, this is absolutely a very cheap device. And the overall performance, surprisingly, it's not better than all the other cheap ones that we have tried before. It's a bummer, they should like spend more time on it to get this thing at least working properly. Oh man, it's absolutely off. This is just horrible. But where that really the biggest surprise of the device is actually the TV out function that works plug and play without any problem and the signal output is very good. I have seen a lot of these cheaper devices now in the last couple of years and most of them have an AV out and if it was eHDMI we did have some let's say struggles. But this thing is just plug and play without any problem. It will take a couple of seconds to boot up but it's absolutely great. Another thing I wanted to check out is to see how does it work with the SPS ratio. Can we change it out? Will this be looking any good? So let's return to the game. But yeah, it has been adjusted on the display over here, but not on the screen itself. Now it automatically shuts down. Let's plug it in. Let's plug it, plug it loud and in. Let's see. Okay, there we go. In the beginning it did show the game in the console itself but I think it's still a very cool idea you can just actually play the game and see it working just fine but so far I know there's no let's say way to add yourself a Bluetooth controller or another way there is an extra port left but it's not going to be an easy plug-and-play solution and I must say, I must give them some extra kudos for trying. But unfortunately, when you're looking at the overall software, what you're going to get with this particular product is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping for a more powerful rock chip in the inside where we can play way more. Where this thing does have a pretty decent screen, yeah, there are of course are a lot of positive and negative sides. Nevertheless, let me know in the comments what you think of something like this. Would you pick it up for fun novelty? Uh, because for real gaming, there are way better options out there for paying less or getting more for the same money. Thank you all for watching and it would be great to subscribe, hit the little bell and we'll see you in the next video.